Hello friends, it looks like we may have an ammunition shortage coming at us soon. Very, very soon I'm starting to see some uh, pop-ups from some of you guys about emails that you're getting from suppliers. There is a shortage of powder. Uh, basically powder is uh, nowadays is nitrocellulose. Uh, this is basically what uh, gun cotton is. This is powder. Uh, for ammunition and it is in short supply and we're going to go to the root of why this is happening. I got some uh, behind the scenes emails to read to you. I got some uh, warnings to you uh, because did you know that we get most of our gunpowder from overseas and specifically from China. We got a lot to talk about. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar. I'm an accountant by trade and uh, we cover things here that the news media isn't covering. And also you guys are sending in a lot of information and uh, we, wanna, we wanna track in on that and dive deep on some of the things that you guys are pointing out. So uh, one of our viewers here on this channel, I won't mention them by name uh, because uh, I wanna respect everyone's privacy and everything. Uh, so this email was basically one of their suppliers for powder uh, for reloading um, and for um, ammunition and such, uh, they said that I got this interesting email from, from uh, our supplier out there. Let me read this supplier email to you. The great powder shortage of 2024 is said to be imminent. Many importers and manufacturers are claiming that nitrocellulose, a core component of gunpowder that originates from the cotton plant in China, is facing a shortage. The shortage is caused by China themselves, or they, as they are allegedly, allegedly refusing to sell nitrocellulose to Western nations or Europe, and only supplying Russian interests. Interesting. Currently, we are enjoying some of the lowest ammo prices in years, uh, but if this is true, it will disrupt the supply chain dramatically before the election causing fall ammo prices to skyrocket. So friends, we are bringing you breaking news before it's breaking news. So if you need to stock up on some um, ammo, you might need to do that soon. There's some good prices out there right now. Um, you know, a lot of you guys know of Ammo Seek out there. It's a great site. Uh, helps you sort through a lot of deals and find the lowest prices out there. You might want to hop on that website. If there's stuff that you need uh, to stock up on, remember it's good to get stuff for, uh, may, for usage, right? So like if you're actually in uh, needing to get some stuff done, you need to have that type of ammo, but then you need lots and lots of practice ammo, right? Make sure you have lots and lots of ammo for, you know, sharpening your skills and sharpening other people's skills. You need a lot of that, just general cheap stuff uh, so that you can, you know, hone in uh, what you need to hone in. But expect prices to go up dramatically out there uh, if, if this comes through. Now, I did find some other Co uh, corroborating sources out there in the news, and it is apparently true. China has, not officially, but is putting soft export bans on gun cotton to the United States and Western countries. Now, will this filter through other countries, third countries, like uh, Vietnam purchasing from them, and then re-exporting it to the United States? Possibly, but that may impact prices and China may actually uh, start punishing companies that are rebranding and re-exporting uh, this stuff. Now, we're talking about, uh, in 2018, let's just to put this in perspective, the United States imported about 14,000 tons of nit nitrocellulose. Now, nitrocellulose isn't gunpowder, but it's a a big component of it. Um, so it's basically, re you need it in order to make gunpowder uh, for modern ammunition and everything like that. But it's used for a lot of other stuff out there too. It's used in paints. It's used especially in paints that go on cars. Um, it's used in a lot of other uh, products, furniture, 
uh, uses nitrocellulose. It's, it's used for a whole bunch of stuff out there. But one of the main use cases out there is for ammunition. And of course, we have some kind of thing happening in Europe where a whole bunch of ammunition is being used. And uh, this ammunition is being used up in a dramatic and uh, big way. This is not only in small stuff, but also in larger shells and such. Those use it as well. Now, the United States is rapidly trying to expand its production of large shells and that will use a lot of gun cotton in those. So, will this be pulled away from paint and used uh, for ammunition production? But we've grown dependent upon China for our ammunition, which is really scary when you think about this. I saw a number of news articles uh, where some people in Congress have tried to raise this issue before and saying we need to produce more gun cotton in the United States because we're dependent on the country that we may end up shooting at for the ammunition to shoot at them with. So, uh, China is the second largest um, exporter of nitrocellulose in the world. And um, countries uh, that we import, import most of our nitrocellulose from are China, Germany, and we do import from Thailand as well. Now the thing is about Germany is it looks like a bunch of that nitrocellulose is actually being re-exported. Um, so they're bringing it in from China and then they're re-exporting it to the United States. So that's kind of a little bit deceptive right there. But, um, I'm sorry, China is the largest producer of gun cotton or nitrocellulose in the world, not the second largest. Um, the United States is the second largest importer of nitrocellulose in the world, right behind Vietnam. But again, they use that a lot of that for manufacturing of painted goods and paints and stuff like that. Um, but they also do make some uh, ammunition and such there too. Uh, but the United States does produce some for itself. Uh, Canada also makes some, but uh, the big ones out there are China, Germany, and Thailand uh, that produce gun cotton. Now, will we be able to source that from Thai, uh, Thailand? Maybe, but there's word out there that Thailand may be joining the BRICS countries as well, the BRICS Alliance. Uh, they may be pivoting away from the United States and its allies. Uh, Thailand has always kind of played ball with the West, but it's never really been a strong, um, close supporter. It's always kind of had some pretty good relations with China and with India. Uh, Thailand is not a, a strong Western supporting country, not like Japan, not like the Philippines even. And even the Philippines kind of wishy, gets wishy-washy every so often. Uh, when you look at Indonesia and Thailand, they don't really want to jump in the bed with the West. And uh, they, they play the game enough to get some foreign subsidies and such, but they really are independent. So seeing that Thailand is a major produ produ uh, producer of this as well, um, of course, Russia is, is hankering to get as much uh, gunpowder as they possibly can get their hands on, as well as the other um, stuff for artillery shells. They're trying to ramp up production of artillery shells even more. And they're buying a lot of these key components from China. And China is more than happy to supply them to them. Um, and when we look at the costs of gun cotton out there, it's not that it's so hard to make. It's just, it's just a relatively low volume. Uh, it's a you don't make much money off of it, right? I mean, you don't get rich making gun cotton out there. And so China just makes a bunch of it cheap and uh, the United States just doesn't have the industrial capacity to um, produce it in large quantities right now. Uh, though it may be relatively easy to scale up factories uh, to make gun cotton, but there are some serious issues with gun cotton because it's kind of, flammable. <laughs> Let's just say that way. It's kind of flammable. And so a lot of protections need to be put in place. And the EPA is not super happy with people doing making that here in the United States. Uh, safety concerns as well as environmental concerns. 
Uh, so gun cotton may be hard to produce inside the United States at new factories because of all the regulations and such. Some of the factories that are still making it here in the United States have been grandfathered in uh, to continue making it, and also the ones that are directly supplying uh, the ammunition that's being made for the U.S. military and the artillery shells made for the United States. However, we are still importing a bunch from overseas as the second largest importer of it in the world. So, what do you guys think? Do you think that means that we're going to have some ammunition issues coming up in the near future? Do you think that ammunition prices are going to spike? Uh, we got copper prices going up. We got um, other components of this going up, uh, but the powder itself has not been an issue up to this point. But hearing uh, what some of these companies are saying behind the scenes, that the, what they're seeing, that they're hearing that this may be coming our way, uh, that you might want to stock up now. Now that the point of that was uh, that email was not to say that you should uh, uh, buy a lot more now, but rather, hey, this may be coming our way. You might want to uh, you might want to get ready for this. Uh, this the company itself um, is Tactical S H T that word uh, Tactical. Uh, uh, you, if you've been around the block, you've probably heard of the company, uh, but knowing that they're sending out emails to their, to people that uh, purchase the raw powder, uh, that that is something that is coming our way. All right, friends, hopefully you found that this useful, um, that it might be a good idea to get ahead of this, stock up whatever you need uh, for the near future, and if you're looking at long-term stocking up, uh, you might want to move that to the front of the line because we may have shortages of other stuff uh, coming in the near future. It may be a lot cheaper to stock up now than it will be in the future. Um, but with inflation out there, you know it's going to be more expensive later than it is today. It's a great inflation hedge. Make sure you're uh, protecting it. Uh, if you have a whole bunch, make sure you're storing it properly in climate controlled. Uh, make sure it's not getting wet and rusting and make sure that you're uh, you're watching out for, for a little bit. If you've dropped a bunch of money on it, make sure that you're not having it uh, go bad on you because you're not storing it properly, right? All right, friends, if you have other tips and tricks that you want to um, let people know or some favorite suppliers out there, make sure you, you don't put a link because, of course, if you put a link, uh, YouTube will delete your comment. Uh, I don't have any say in the matter. That's just what they do. So some of you uh, wonder why your stuff gets deleted. If you put a link in there, YouTube just automatically deletes it. Sometimes you can, um, you can put video links uh, to other YouTube videos uh, in the links, but um, that, uh, that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. All right, friends, hopefully you got something out of this. If so, give it a like, uh, like thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.